Never Stop Learning, week 165. We're going to take a quick look at how to use the Appearance Panel in Adobe Illustrator CC 2014. So the first thing you want to do is bring up your Appearance Panel, and you can find it by coming over to the Window menu, scrolling down till you find Appearance, and when you click on it, your Appearance Panel is going to pop out. All right, I'm going to come over here to the right, and when I hover over these little arrows, it's showing me that I could actually expand these panels. So when I click on it, I have a better view of what's going on in the Appearance Panel. So what the appearance panel does is it tells me what's happening with my artwork at all times. At the moment, it's showing us that we have no selection, but if I were to draw something out, I would have a black stroke set to one point, I'd have a white fill, and all of this would have the default opacity of 100%. So let's draw something out and see what happens. I'm gonna hit the L key to bring up the ellipse tool, and I'll click and drag in the center of my document while holding down the option and shift keys and now that I have this nice big circle, I'm going to release, and there you have it. It's a white fill with the black stroke set to one point. Over here in the appearance panel, it's showing us that we have a path selected, and we could actually make some changes to our stroke. So if I click on this little link here for stroke, it brings up the stroke panel, and I could change the weight here. So I'll change it over to 10 points. Now I have a nice big stroke here. Next, I want to change the fill color. So I'll click on this. This little drop down menu gives me this uh, swatches panel. And the color I want to choose is this RGB cyan. When I click on it, it's updated over here in my document. And all I have to do is click on this panel, and that's going to hide that little um, window for me. All right, great. So now what I want to do is zoom in on my artwork a little bit so we could see some changes in the stacking order here. So back in the appearance panel, we have the stroke that's just above this fill. If I click and drag with this fill, I could move its location now I have it above the stroke once I release. You see the change has been made over here on my artwork. I'll come back over to the appearance panel and I'll grab this fill, click and drag. Once I get that little highlighted bar, I know I could release it and the change is updated automatically. All right, so let me uh, make some changes to the stroke here. I'm gonna click on this link and I wanna choose dash lines. All right, the reason I like bringing it into this mode is you can actually see what's going on with the stroke. So the fill goes all the way to the edge of the path, and then we have this black stroke set to 10 points. Five points are hanging in the inside, and those five points are gonna be covering the fill. And the other five points are hanging out over the edge, and that's why you get this effect here. All right, so let's come back over to the appearance panel. And another thing I could do is add additional strokes. So over here at the bottom, while I have that stroke highlighted, I can just click on this button here that says Duplicate Selected Item, and now I have an exact copy of that original stroke. I'm going to click on the one on the bottom to target that stroke, and I'm going to make some changes. I'm going to change it from a black stroke to a red stroke, but you don't see it changed over here because it's the exact same size as the stroke above it. So what I want to do is click on Stroke, and we'll change from dashed lines to just a regular stroke. All right, so when I come back over to the Appearance panel, I could also hide the visibility of specific attributes. So I could click on this stroke and now it's no longer showing it. So here you go, we have this nice red ring going around our object. If I click right here, now we brought back that dashed line. All right, so I wanna create another stroke. I could also click and drag on the one I wanna make a copy of. And once I hover over this button, you see the cursor changes up a bit. Now it's a plus sign, so when I release, I've made an exact copy of that stroke. I'm going to target the one on the bottom, and I'll change the color to yellow. Now that I have a yellow stroke, I'm going to fatten this guy up a little bit so you can see it. Now I've increased it to 20 points, and now you see it hanging over in the inside and on the outside of this object. All right, so next, I'd like to come over here and show you one other way to make a copy of these strokes. Over here at the bottom left, when I hover over this guy, it's showing Add New Stroke. So when I click on it, it just makes a copy of that stroke for me right at the bottom of the stack. I'm going to target this one and change the color to green. I'll click right here in the panel to hide that window. And then I'll come back over here to change the size. So from 40, I mean from 20, we'll go to 40. And now we have this nice fat stroke going on here, but that's a little bit too fat for me. So I'm going to reduce the size by just hovering over this section and using my scroll wheel. All right, so that looks pretty good to me. Now, let's play around with the uh, arrangement of the stacking order again. All right, at the bottom, we have this cyan fill. Above it, we have a green stroke, then a yellow stroke, a red stroke, and then a black dash stroke. 
I'm going to bring this cyan fill up one location so that it's so that it will be covering this green stroke only in this portion, but you will still see the green stroke over here in the outer section. All right, back over here in the appearance panel, I'll grab my fill, click and drag, bring it just above that stroke, and when I release, now you see it's covering this portion of the green stroke. All right, I'm going to move it one more time so that the cyan is going to start covering this portion of the yellow stroke, but you'll still see the yellow stroke on the outside. All right, come back over here to the appearance panel, grab the fill, click and drag. Once I release, now you see this yellow stroke and the green stroke is gone from the inside, but they're still hanging out over here on the outside. All right, let me bring this fill back down one location, and I'm going to hit Command-1 just so I can get a better view of what's going on here. All right, great. Now that I got this guy set up pretty good, uh, we've just been adding strokes. Now what I want to do is add some more fills because you could also add fills on top of each other. So, all right, so I'll come back over here to the appearance panel. I'll grab this fill by clicking and dragging on it. And once I hover over this guy, I'll release, and now I have a new fill. The one on top, I'm going to target it by clicking on it once. And I'm going to change the fill color by just clicking right here on this little drop-down menu. Now I have these little swatches. I'm going to choose a gradient. I choose this white and black gradient. And now I need to make some changes to it. So over here in the gradient panel, I'll change the type from linear to radial. And then back over here in the appearance panel, we could actually twirl this guy down specifically for this gradient. And when I hover over opacity, you see I could bring up the transparency panel by just clicking on that link. All right, now I'm going to change the blend mode to multiply. And when I hover over this opacity value with my scroll wheel, I can make some changes. Once I get the look I'm going for, I'll click in the panel to hide that window. All right, cool. So now we've got this awesome piece of artwork here created by using several different strokes and different fills. We could also apply some effects here. So what I'd like to do is add a drop shadow to this yellow stroke. Over here in the appearance panel, I'm going to target the stroke. And then down towards the bottom, right here, I'm able to uh, add a new effect. I'll click on it once, and I'm going to find Stylize and Drop Shadow. I'll click on Drop Shadow, and that brings up my Drop Shadow window. In here, I'm going to hit Preview first so I can see what's going on. Now I've actually applied this Drop Shadow here. I'm going to increase the opacity, and I'm going to remove some of that blur just so we can see this a little bit more clearly. I'll click OK, and that's going to accept that change. So here we have a drop shadow that's hanging out inside covering this fill. And over here on this portion, it's actually covering one of those strokes. So you see we have this drop shadow that's being casted off of this yellow stroke here. I'll come back over to the appearance panel. And when I target this yellow stroke, I can click on this twirl down. Now not only do I see the opacity, but now I can see this effect. If I click on drop shadow, it brings back that drop shadow window. Click on preview. And now I can continue to edit that exact same drop shadow that I had earlier. So I'll just drop the opacity a little bit, up this uh, blur a little bit. And let me increase the opacity just so we could see it a little bit more clearly. All right, there we go. That's good. I'll click OK. And now I have that drop shadow applied right here to this stroke. Now, we could also play around with where this drop shadow is going to be located. At the moment, we're targeting this yellow stroke. But what if I want this same drop shadow to only be applied to the entire object? Well, I'll just click and drag, bring it down to the bottom of the stack. Once I release, now that drop shadow is actually being applied to the entire object. And those are some of the basics for the appearance panel in Adobe Illustrator. But before I go, I want to show you this other plugin I have installed on my machine. It's called Stylism by Astute Graphics. When I click on it right here in the Tools panel, you see I get these cool handles where I could click and drag and start making some other changes to my uh, actual drop shadow effect. I click right here on this color picker, and I choose a different color right over here. When I click OK, you see it's all updated over here. Now the cool thing about this uh, plugin is that it works with the native effects in Adobe Illustrator. So as you can see, once I bring up the drop shadow window, it shows the exact same information that we created using the stylism plugin. And there you have it folks, that's the appearance panel basics in Adobe Illustrator CC 2014.